Uh, so you mentioned uh, metrics and measures a little bit earlier. And we have a, a team here that works on a product that's about data and analytics. So let, let's change gears a little bit and talk about uh, data in sports and uh, data in cricket. So what are the things that are happening relative to use of data and technology in cricket that you are most excited about? The arrival of T20 has changed what data can do in sport because we now have many more data points. What would happen with test cricket is because the conditions were so different in different parts of the world and because they were different from day one to day four, so measuring and comparing was becoming very difficult and so projecting was very difficult. T20, because there's so many games, you have a far bigger database and also reasonably standardized playing conditions. Of course, in some places you have post-it stamp boundaries and in some places you have bigger boundaries, but largely standardized. And because everything is now measured, every ball is measured on 25 or 30 parameters. So can you imagine the number of multiple data points that you're getting when you when you combine any, any two elements? So today when a ball is bowled, you will know, for example, at what speed it has left the hand, at what angle it has left the hand, uh, from what height the bowler has delivered it, how much pace it has lost on its way to the batsman, but also how, what is the batsman's strike rate when the ball comes at a certain pace and a certain height? So in a bats, if a batsman's in a stance, you break that up into a grid of nine and say, okay, in, in each grid, what is your strike rate against each type of bowling? Because you have so many data points now, you're able to come up with those. So you will say, for example, that shoulder, just up under shoulder height, outside of stump, 140 kilometers an hour is the way to bowl to this batsman. That is what data is able to tell you today. These are very basic fundamental data points. What data is now telling us is it's getting predictive. We still don't have enough data to build machine learning models, but we are getting there. Slowly people are getting into predictive behavior. They will look at a person's career and say, okay, every time this person faces three balls, three dot balls, what does she do next ball? So starting to now build predictive models, the bowler knows, okay, if I bowl three dot balls, I have to bowl her this ball next. Then you find out what release shots are. So you're able to actually form a complete picture of a player today. And that is why you will find that some coaches, there are matchups these days in sport. You say, okay, what is the best matchup for this person? And you'll find some coaches putting up court language outside. The other day, you would have probably seen someone holding a placard saying C1. I don't know what C1 is, but C1 is saying, okay, this batsman's come in, here's a matchup for this player. And because a few balls can turn the course of the game, everyone plays the matchup. So you'll find at any given time, four or five batsmen are ready to go in. If a wicket falls on the first ball of an over where a left armer is bowling, somebody in the team has a very good strike rate against left arm bowling. Five balls can be game-changing. They will set that person out. You also measure, if you've got only 20 balls, if you've got, say, 15 balls left in a game, who goes out to play? If there are two batsmen whose strike rate is 180, but there's one person who plays 10 balls at a strike rate of 100, the next at a strike rate of 300. There's no point sending out that person with 15 balls left. So you also measure quick starts, rapid starts, what stage of the innings are you doing it. So it's getting predictive. And what I'm telling you now is actually still very basic. Data is telling you is working on biomechanics, on, on modeling of actions, on, on judging muscle strength, on judging which muscles to, uh, to strengthen for whom, on being able to predict a stress fracture before it actually comes. So you'll find that some players only play certain games and then they're pulled out. Medical science is also relying on things like this. So T20 is an astonishing uh, data mine, data field. What it is doing is interesting for people like us. 